what to do in 20 days. Now, I believe what to do in 20 days lies on this very first equation, your self-evaluation. Where are you standing today on the 12th of November 2024? Because each one of you will be having a different position today. Some might be doing fine tunings, some might be into the revision phase, some might be doing the practice of the past papers, some might be left with 50% of the course unattended because they're facing some severe job challenges. Now, each one of you are different as of today, and each one of you needs to devise a strategy which can give you success in the upcoming exams if you have already booked for the December 2024 exams. So nothing to worry about. You still have 20 days. You still have 480 hours. And you need to utilize this in the best possible manner to get excellence. How could you utilize this 480 hours at your disposal in the best manner? I'll be emphasizing on that shortly. I believe the focus in this last 20 days has to be on a priority list, which I will be sharing with you, some very important technical articles, uh, some recent past papers, and more importantly, the examiner report. Now, I'll try to devise a study approach for each one of you, but this will all be changed according to the results of your self-evaluation, and you need to adapt and tailor this study approach accordingly. Now, just before the session today, uh, I prepared my focus list. And each time I give my focus list, it comes with a disclaimer that this is not an absolute assurance that each and every topic you will look for in the focus list will come in the exam paper. No, this is just on the basis of my analysis and on the basis of my experience of teaching this AAA paper, it's been over 17 years now. Um, I've done some research, some careful analysis to give you this focused list, but uh, on the day of exam, it could be possible that you only get 25% of the list, 50% of the list, or even 0% of the list, because again, this is based upon assumptions. What is the focus list which you should focus in these last 20 days. When I evaluated the recent papers and I evaluated the recent publications uh, before preparing this focus list, I was of the opinion that the following topics are very important. Number one, we know there is a greater emphasis by the examining team on sustainability information or sustainability assurance uh, this is backed by the three articles we have seen on the subject matter published under a year. And you know, all these three articles are under the syllabus area F if you go on the website. So with those three articles uh, there on the website, within a year, we know there is a greater emphasis on sustainability, sustainability assurance, sustainability information, a questions around them is possible some testings around them is possible because this is again an uh, this is an area which is developing this is an area which is gaining uh, examiner interest and even with these current developments around global warming and the role of the auditor and the growing pressure on the auditor about uh, giving uh, green assurance sustainability assurance from the stakeholders this subject matter is gaining popularity globally and could impact your future exams, including December 2024. So please ensure you brush over the three articles. Again, if you are my regular student, you're taking my classes, you must have already watched my lectures around it and must have prepared yourself well. But again, if you are not my registered student, you still have a benefit of going to my YouTube channel, exploring resources. I've given you a link at the start of the session today, and you can at least have a fair idea of what sort of things and questions can come from this topic, because I've already covered this in my free resources as well. 
Number two, quality management. We know that continues to dominate ever since we have seen the publication of ISQM1 and ISQM2 as technical articles under the syllabus area C. Uh, in almost every exam setting, we have seen examining team putting a greater emphasis on a question on quality management in section B of the paper. Even the recent uh, December 24 mock, which is now available on the ACCA practice platform, includes a complete question on quality management in the section B. So that again reinforce the examining team mindset about this topic. Number three, matters in accepting a new audit client practice management. We know this has been a popular topic. Uh, with the AAA examining team. And again, if you see the recent uh, four to five years of AAA exams, you will see a lot of questions around matters in accepting a new audit client or a an engagement from an existing audit client. We do see such questions even in other assignments. We do see such questions even in topics like review of prospective financial information or due diligence review, etc. But again, this is a popular topic and this is the syllabus area see where you should be very, very good at. Paragraphs in the audit report. I, I believe students generally tend to neglect or they're not very clear about paragraphs. Key audit matters, material uncertainty relating to going concern, emphasis of a meta paragraph, other meta paragraph, and other information paragraph, OIP. Student seems to be confused uh, they at times overlap the paragraphs. Uh, they at times tend to get confused with these paragraphs. So you should have a very good knowledge around paragraphs because I believe uh, testings around paragraphs could gain more popularity with the examiner in the future exam settings to come, including the critical appraisal of the report. You must have seen lots of past papers around critical appraisal of the report. Critical appraisal of the report is a popular area with the examining team, and every now and then we do get questions around critical appraisals of the report. So be prepared for that subject matter. Communication of matters to those charged with governance uh, is another important area. Uh, mostly the students when preparing for uh, the audit report topic for section B, they tend to focus on opinions, uh, they tend to focus on the recent past papers around reporting, but they tend to ignore that there is another communication which goes to TCWG. Even in recent past papers, we have seen a couple of times the examining team coming up with communication of matters to TCWG or communicating deficiencies to TCWG or communicating uh, matters other than deficiencies in internal control to TCWG. Even in the mock exam for December 24, uh, I think one of the question has a part related to communication of matters to TCWG. So again, that shows the emphasis of this topic and journally, student do prepare uh, the audit report to shareholder, they are underprepared or not at all prepared on communications of matters to TCWG. And there is an article on this. Uh, I'll be showing you a list of the articles you should be going through and preparing. Data analytics and the climatical changes and the auditor responsibility. We know there is an article on data analytics, not a new one. I even captured data analytics four years down the road when it was introduced for the first time in the AAA syllabus. There are so many videos of uh, which I have conducted on this subject matter, including a recent one, which I just did like a day or two before, um, which my students globally can explore and make use of. But data analytics is an important area. You cannot ignore it. It can come in some aspects on in some dimensions in the exam paper, might be the benefits out of it or challenges out of it, or might be the procedures. Uh, even the climatical change. Uh, and looking at my point number one, which was about the greater focus on sustainability with those three articles. Uh, and we know climatical changes and the auditor responsibility is becoming a burning issue or an emerging issue or a popular issue at a global scale. Um, I've already put my video in a free re in my free resources on climatical change, I think like uh, perhaps one and a half years ago, and even did a video for my paid students as well who are registered under me. So both sets of students can benefit from that discussion and know what this topic means and how this can come to the exam paper. 
prospective financial information and due diligence. We know examining team is very fond of putting questions, at least on prospective financial information, seems to be the most popular from all the other assignments we have in syllabus area F, but we cannot rule out the chances of due diligence even for the December 24 exams. Money laundering, uh, if you look at the knowledge areas, uh, we know the fillers, the fillers for six to eight marks or eight to 10 marks in a hundred marks paper can be from around money laundering, fraud, auditor responsibility for fraud. What sort of implications can be on the completion of the audit when you find a fraud close to the completion of the audit? Skepticism, uh, how to apply skepticism to a given scenario given to you in AAA. The, the revised ISA 600 on group audit, uh, particularly uh, when the when the group auditor uh, choose a significant component, what is the definition of a significant component? Because we know under the revised ISA 600, is that it has changed to more of the qualitative factors than to the quantitative factors. And again, my students register and we must be knowing about it. Using the work of others, we know that's been a popular area, particularly around in, uh, internal auditor and expert. We do see more questions, but ye yes, even the component auditor uh, or how a group auditor make use, make, uh, use the work of the component auditor. Laws and regulations and the auditor responsibility, particularly for a non-compliance and how to report a non-compliance. And finally, auditor liability can be a surprise. That's just my assumption. Uh, there is an article, long-standing article, we have seen uh, a question on auditor liability uh, in the very early history of AAA. But if you look at the last five years and six years, you will never see a question around auditor liability. Some time it has to come back. So we cannot just rule out because we know there is a lot of expect the unexpected uh, in AAA. So it could be a surprise factor sooner. Apart from this nine, we know there has to be a very important focus on the international financial reporting standards. I'm not giving you a list of that, but you know that any student who is well equipped with IFRS, who has brushed over IFRS, who is who has recently given SBR or is giving SBR in December with AAA, you are very well prepared to take on subject matters like audit risk, risk of material misstatements, a question on audit evidence and a question on reporting, because all these questions do test your accounting knowledge. So the better you are on accounting knowledge and the better you have brushed over the accounting knowledge, you stand in a good position to excel in the exam. So this is my focus list with a disclaimer. Now, moving away from the focus list and uh, looking into what sort of a study approach you can have for next 20 days when you have a focus list, and particularly for the students who are facing job challenges, uh, finding difficult to sit down and study, I believe this focus list can be much helpful to you. In the last 20 days, uh, I would prefer that the students focus on recent five papers, starting from the most recent one, which is the March, June 24, and going backward and completing five papers, which is the last March, June 22, this order. Evaluate the latest examiner report, March, June 24. It is important, and I'll just be emphasizing on its importance. Number three, looking at four exam technique articles. Number one, ethics in the AAA exam, which you will find under the syllabus area B. Approach, uh, approaching the section A question in AAA, you will find this under syllabus area D. Exam technique part one, business risk, and exam technique part two, audit risk and risk of material misstatement. You will find the article number three and four again under syllabus area D. These are four technique articles, which tells you how to write a good answer. Particularly the students who are preparing themselves on a self basis, not enrolled under a tutor or a teacher, uh, th these exam technique articles will play a crucial part in terms of refining your answers and making them better. Apart from these four articles, apart from these five recent papers and one examiner report, which should be in your 20 days agenda, what else should be there? Nine key technical articles, and most of them are around the focus list I have given you, and they should not be avoided at any cost. Try to read an article a day, and in nine days, you're finished. 
IWSA 5000 ED, you will find this under syllabus area F. This is around sustainability. Assurance on sustainability information part one and part two. Again, you will find this under syllabus area F. Now, number one and number two are the three articles which have been published under a year around sustainability information and assurance and holds importance. Number three, the two articles on quality management, ISQM 1 and 2 will be important, still holds important, despite the fact it's been released uh, now over a year and so. Audit report to TCWG, that's an important article. I emphasized on that in my focus list. I, ISA 600 revised on group audit. I even had an emphasis of that in my focus list. Data analytics is another article. You will find them all on the website. Auditor liability, that's a surprise vector. And then with all that, these are nine articles, right? Because in number two, there are two articles. In number three, there are two articles, right? So that makes it nine. Plus, you should not avoid the AAA December 24 mock exam published by ACCA must to do. So five recent papers, one mock, that's six papers in 20 days. One examiner report in 20 days nine articles in 20 days and four exam technique article in 20 days. So you can take a screenshot of this, put it on your table and ensure you do everything in this list in the last 20 days, including the focus list I've given you. So take the printout of both, take a screenshot of both uh, and go down preparing yourself. Okay, finally down with some key questions. Uh, what key questions you can do in the last 20 days. Uh, there might be some key questions which are not in the recent five papers. Uh, I've suggested you to do all uh, the recent five papers in full. You might find 50 to 60% of the key questions within the recent papers, which I've recommended you, but some of them can be out of the recent five papers. You need to search them, but these are key questions which have been very important questions, uh, very uh, interesting questions which have come in the recent papers. For business risk, March, June 24, question number 1A around the Magenta Group. September, December 23, question number 1A around Hammer Group. December 22, question number 1A around Mercurio Company. For practice management, March, June 22, question number 1D around infinite company was a very interesting question because this question asked students that use the exhibit five, conduct a review of the information contained in the Meadow and company client acceptance and evaluate the weaknesses uh, in Pascal and company acceptance procedure. What mistakes have the audit firm done in client acceptance procedure? They've given you some information in the Exhibit 5 about uh, the client acceptance procedure. You simply need to evaluate the weaknesses the audit firm has done in that acceptance procedure. It was a very good question in March, June 22, question number 1D. For the quality management, uh, I would prefer that you do the March, June 21, question number 2 around the bond group having four subsidiaries. September 22, question number two around the Forsythia group. Another interesting question around quality management. For ethical and professional issues, I would recommend that you do questions around March, June 24. Question number two, it is a very interesting question among all recent questions which have come on ethical and professional issues. Reporting and evidence. March, June 24, question number three, that's must to be done. September, December 23, question number three, that's another must. March, June 21, question number three, that's a very, very important one. I would rate this number three, March, June 21, question number three, as the most important in the list so far on your screen. March, June 23, question number three. This is the one I was talking about. Communication to those charged with governance. And student tends to ignore this topic. Please ensure you do the March, June 23, question number three, because that's the one around communication to those charged with governance and is very interesting. Including you can do the mock exam, December 24. There is a question on the same subject matter. Other assignments. September, December 23, question number two, around forensic. September, December 21, question number two around prospective financial information. March, June 22, question number two around due diligence. 
September 22, question three around prospective financial information. And March, June 23, question number two around prospective financial information. I just mentioned that prospective financial information is the most popular with the examining team. So plenty of questions on PFI with one each on forensic and due diligence. Other syllabus areas. Question number one, C, December 22, for impact on outsourcing on audit planning. Question number one, A, September, December 21, for planning matters, initial audit engagement. We know that comes at times in the question number one. March, June 22, question number one, C, uh, with respect to money laundering. September 22, question number 1D, with reference to auditor responsibility for laws and regulations. So this is a list of the key questions you should be focusing on. Apart from the recent five papers and the mock exam you will be doing. Just do a self-evaluation. Just ensure how much of these questions have you done. If anyone is still remaining, try to wrap them up in the next 20 days. The last thing, ignorance is disastrous. I hope this session today must have largely benefited you in terms of the focus list, in terms of my free resources, in terms of what you can do inside 20 days. But more important than that is the March, June 24 examiner report. I don't know why student tends to ignore reading examiner reports. They will do everything but they will not read examiner report even though I have emphasized on the subject matter for years. But I'm still not getting results. Student will do everything. They will not be bothered about at least downloading one single examiner report and read it in like 90 minutes max. Keep a pen, read through it, annotate it, find issues, find the problems why students fail, learn from them and avoid them and you will be successful. But students are not ready to do it. Even though students approach me that this was my fifth attempt, my sixth attempt, my seventh attempt, I'm failing. And I, I asked them a simple question. Have you ever read uh, an examiner report in these last six settings? And the answer comes no. And you're amazed that you are ignoring the most important resource. Because if you're not investigating why is a student failing in AAA, and you're not reading that, and you're not prepared to read that, or you're not bothered to read that, the result will still be the same. And that's the reason you are appearing for AAA the sixth time because you're not, you're not taking the step to change yourself. Till the time you don't take the step to change yourself, nothing will change. Examiner report is a must to read document and I'm, I'm not telling you many, I'm just telling you one, at least one in 20 days. That's not a bad bargain. You need to read the March, June 24 examiner report after you have attempted the March, June 24 exam. First do the March, June 24 exam. And once you're done with it, read the examiner report. Keep your March, June 24 paper with you as a self-check. Keep your answer with you and read through the examiner report to identify your strengths and weaknesses. This analysis will help you to do better in the AAA pre-December 24 mock and will largely benefit you in the real exam. There could be a mistake you're doing which you get through the examiner report. That is why I'm saying ignorance is disastrous. If there is a weakness which you are doing in your answer and you are not aware of it, and you are taking that same weakness to the real exam and you do the same mistake in the real exam, what will happen? Your marks will go down. They might even go down below 50 and you fail. So if you spend time and you identify the weaknesses, you still have 20 days to overcome them and you will excel. So it's, it's for your benefit, right? It's for your benefit. But the problem is students don't realize the importance of reading this document on your screen. They will read everything, but not this. There are lots of issues you might be doing in your answers, which are highlighted by the examiner as part of the question wise feedback. And that's the source of learning for you. So I hope all the students 
uh, with AAA December 24 exams coming up. This uh, discussion around the focus list and the study strategy would largely benefit you. I hope you will make uh, a timetable, stick to it, and do excellence in the upcoming exams. If you still have any query, you want to reach me, sure, you can reach me uh, at my email ID on your screen, at my WhatsApp number. I prefer more WhatsApp communication because I'm more active onto that. Or you can follow my LinkedIn channel, which is linkedin.com slash in slash Kashif dot dash Kamran. Sorry, that's where I'm more active at. So I wish you all the very best of luck. I hope you will largely benefit from this discussion, preparing AAA Insight 20 days. All the best, best of luck. Your tutor, Kashif Kamran, signing off from the session.